Hello once again everybody, Andrew Rogers here, TST Total Sports Talk. Thank you very much for joining me as always. It's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, yeah, hope everybody's doing good uh, and hope everybody had an awesome uh, week in the uh, sports uh, surroundings and that they enjoyed it thoroughly. It is Tuesday, January the 30th, 2018. Yes, we were at the tail end of January. A lot of exciting things coming up. The big one is the Super Bowl that goes down this Sunday between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots should be an absolute dandy. Uh, we got a loaded show and a lot of things that we want to talk about uh, to get you up to speed with and to tee you up for the for the next week in the in the sports world. Uh, the first thing though that we want to do, however, on the program is congratulate. Uh, this past week, it was announced the 2018 Hall of Fame class going into the Baseball Hall of Fame, and it is a loaded one. We have Vladimir Guerrero, Chipper Jones, Jim Tomey, and Trevor Hoffman. Uh, four unbelievable players in their day, and uh, all four very, very deserving of this uh, of this Hall of Fame nod and this prestigious honor. Uh, Vladimir Guerrero, you got to start with him. He's a, He was a nine-time All-Star and an eight-time Silver Slugger winner. Uh, he played for four teams over his career, including the Los Angeles Angels, the Texas Rangers, the Baltimore Orioles, and of course he got his start with the Montreal Expos. Uh, he was also the 2004 American League MVP. He had an amazing, amazing career. He was one of the most dynamic players of his time, and it is quite an honor, and, uh, to, and it's just wonderful seeing him go into the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's just an unbelievable congratulations to Vladimir Guerrero. And obviously his son is with the Jays organization, which is a, a tremendous uh, excitement for Blue Jays fans. And it should be. He is a he is an unbelievable talent. If he turns anything out like his father, uh, we're in for a treat. Uh, Blue Jays fans, you're in for a treat. Uh, Chipper Jones uh, only played for one team his entire career. It was the Atlanta Braves, and boy, was he amazing. Uh, he was one of the best third basemen in his day and in his time, and will go down as one of the best in all of history. He was an eight-time All-Star, two-time Silver Slugger winner, the 1999 National League MVP, and, of course, part of the World Series championship Atlanta Braves team in 1995. A tremendous honor for Chipper Jones. Congratulations, sir. Um, on your amazing career, and uh, it's obviously paid off now with this Hall of Fame induction. Congratulations. Moving on, Jim Tomey. Uh, what a what a dynamic player this was. Uh, the, you know what? One of the one of the most dominant left-handed bats in all of baseball. Uh, this guy really knew how to mash home runs. Uh, considering he hit 612 in his career, that spanned uh, almost. Uh, we got uh, seven uh, six teams here. He played for the Cleveland Indians, the Philadelphia Phillies, the Chicago White Sox, the Minnesota Twins, Los Angeles Dodgers, and the Baltimore Orioles. Of course, most people know his time in Philadelphia. He was very uh, popular there, uh, and Cleveland Indians, obviously, there, among others. He had six different seasons where he hit 40 or more home runs. That's very impressive and very consistent. And nine seasons of 100-plus RBIs. Just unbelievable. And again, congratulations to Mr. Tomey on his, world, on his uh, Hall of Fame induction. And finally, Trevor Hoffman. Uh, this one's actually really awesome, and I, I feel really good for the guy going in. Uh, he was a closer in his day, and uh, he was very good at that. He played for San Diego Padres, the uh, uh, the uh, Miami Marlins, or Florida Marlins, as they would have been called then, and the Milwaukee Brewers. Spent the bulk of his career in San Diego. I believe he played 15 seasons in San Diego. Uh, he was the first reliever to record 500 and 600 saves, respectively. Uh, he was the all-time leader in saves before Mariano Rivera broke it when he played for the Yankees. Um, he was a seven-time All-Star, a two-time National League reliever of the year, and a two-time National League saves leader, Trevor Hoffman. Uh, these four players, just unbelievable to see them go in, and congratulations to them. It's a, it's, a, it's just unbelievable. Uh, so, yes, it was a very busy week in the sports week last week. We... Uh, we're going to talk about the Winterhawks. Playoff time is here, baby. And uh, we're going to talk about the Own Sound Attack. We're going to talk about Toronto uh, Maple Leafs. We're going to talk about the Toronto Raptors. And we're going to uh, go a little bit more. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the upcoming Super Bowl this uh, Sunday between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots in our NFL report. All that's coming up and more. Uh, we're going to kick off the show, though, with Hawk Talk. Here it is right now on TST Total Sports Talk. TST Total Sports Talk presents Hawk Talk, brought to you by Gord's Imprints and Design. 
New location opening at 685 Godridge Street in downtown Port Hogan in the fall of 2017. Visit www.gordsimprints.com for more. Welcome back to the program, everybody. Andrew Rogers here, TST Total Sports Talk. This is a Hawk Talk uh, segment of our program where we talk all things WOAA Senior AA Men's Hockey League and the Arsogging Shores Winterhawks. Uh, it was the final regular season uh, weekend in the uh, WOAA, and uh, we want to get you caught up right now on uh, what transpired this past weekend and uh, what shapes up for the playoffs to come. On the WOA scoreboard for Friday, January 26, 2018, there was only the one game on the schedule. It featured the Lucknow Lancers against the Clinton Radars. Uh, Radars winning handily in this one. It was 7-0 was the final. Clinton improving to 19-0 on the season. Uh, that gives them a great shot at going 20-0 as they would face the Soggin Shores Winterhawks on the Sunday. But we'll get to that in a moment. First of all, it was the Soggin Shores Winterhawks in the Milverton four-wheel drives from the Plex. On this past Saturday, Winterhawks winning handily. 8-0 was the final. It was the first meeting between the two teams in history. Jeff Flagler started for the Stock and Shores Winterhawks. Stopped 24 of 24 in the victory for the shutout. While uh, Aiden Doak, Doak started the game for the Milverton four-wheel drive. Stopped 26 of 34 before being relieved by Alex Elliott in the third period. He came on. Stopped 9 of 9 the rest of the way. Milverton drops to 9, 10, and 0 on the year, while the Winterhawks improved to 10, 8, and 1. Scoring was a plenty for the Winterhawks in this one. Chris Menard would post the hat trick, three goals and, and no assists for him. Miles McLean had a three point night as well, goal and two assists for Miles. Lachlan Elder had a goal and an assist, and Connor Patton had a goal and an assist. Also adding singles were Josh Hopkins and Andy Mitchell. Adding assists for the Winterhawks. Brett McDermott had three of them. Greg Tatey, Brian Kazarian, Nick Quaid, Blake Underwood, and Trevor Smith all added singles, while Nick Quaid added two in the Winterhawks. 8 nothing victory over the Milverton four-wheel drives. They improved to 10-8-1 on the season, the Winterhawks. The rest of the Saturday schedule in the WOA results saw the Ripley Wolves defeat the Lucknow Lancers 4-3. It was a final in the shootout. The Tilsonburg Thunder handily defeated the Alora Rocks. 12-3 was the final in that one. As mentioned, Soggy Shores winning 8-0 over Milverton. That was a final there. And the Shelburne Muskies needed a shootout to upend the Huron East Centenaires. 6-5 was the final in the shootout in that one. The regular season finale saw the Soggy Shores Winterhawks travel to Clinton to face off against the Radars. And the Radars completed their 20-0 season by defeating the Winterhawks. 6-2 was the final in this one. A short-handed Winterhawks bench could not, uh, they could not defend against a very powerful Clinton Radars team. As Mark Nother uh, stopped 16 of 18 in the victory for the Radars. While goaltender Richard Harris uh, tried to uh, thwart the attack, but was un ultimately unsuccessful. He stopped 36 of 42 in the loss. Uh, Miles McLean and Andy Mitchell added the goals for the Winterhawks. While Andy Fraz, Nick Quaid, and Brent McDermott added assists. Uh, the Winterhawks finished their season 10-9-1 on the year. Well, like I say, the Radars improved to 20-0. Mark Nother, 16-18 of 18 in the victory. Uh, Max Campbell added two goals. Luke Vick with a goal and an assist. Ryan Watson with a single. Travis uh, Davis Brown with a single. And Tyler Doig with a single. Uh, the Clinton Radars proving to be too much on this day. And finally, the regular season wrapped on, the, uh, on Sunday, January the 28th. The only other game on the schedule that day, the makeup game, was Tilsonburg over Milverton. 7 3 was the final. And as mentioned, the Clinton Radars, 6 2 victors over the Sogging Shores Winterhawks. What this all means now is the final standings shake out like this Clinton Radars clinched the number one seed. They, are 20, they finished 20 0, good for 40 points. Ripley in the number two spot is set with finished 17 3, very impressive on the season. Durham, 16 4. Tilsonburg 14 3 and 3, Shelburne 11 and 9, Sugging Shores 10 9 and 1, Milverton 9 and 11, Huron East 7 10 and 3. You had Petrolia, Shallow Lake, Tavistock, Lucknow, and Alora in the bottom 9 through 13. The 2018 playoff bracket in the WOA shakes out like this. You have the number one seeded Clint Radars will face the Huron East Sentinels. Will be quite the battle there. You got the Durham Thundercats in the number three spot. They'll take on the Sogging Shores Winterhawks in the first round. 
The Tilsonburg Thunder and the Shelburne Muskies will do battle in a matchup of four versus five. And you have the Ripley Wolves against the Millard and Four Wheel Drives in the first round, a matchup of two versus seven. Take a look in depth now at your playoff matchups. The Clinton Radars and the Huron East Centenaires will go down like this. Game one will go Friday, February 2nd in Clinton. That's an 8.30 start. You got game two Saturday, February the 3rd. That'll be in Seaforth at 7.30. Friday, February 9th, game three will go in Seaforth at 8.30. Saturday, February 10th will feature game four in Clinton. That goes at 8.30 as well. Game five, Friday, February 16th in Clinton at 8.30 if necessary. Saturday, February 17th in Seaforth. And then Tuesday, February 20th in Clinton. The Ripley Wolves and the Milford and Four Wheel Drives will do battle uh, in a series of two versus seven. Game one goes Saturday, February the 3rd in Ripley. That starts at 7 uh, in Ripley. Sunday, February 4th will be in Milverton at 3 o'clock. That will be the game time there for game number two. Game three, Friday, Friday, February the 9th in Ripley. That's an 8.45 start. Game number four, Saturday, February 10th in Milverton. Time to be determined there yet. We will update that as soon as we get it. Game number five will go Saturday, February 17th in Ripley. That's a 7 p.m. start if necessary. Sunday, February 18th in Milverton at 4 o'clock. And Monday, February 19th in Ripley for game number 7, if necessary, at 5.15. In a matchup of 4 versus 5, it'll be the Tilsonburg Thunder over against the Shelburne Muskies. Game number 1 will go Saturday, February the 3rd. That's a 7.30 start in Tilsonburg. Game number 2 will go in Shelburne, Friday, February the 9th at 8.30. Game 3 will take place Saturday, February the 10th at 7.30 in Tilsonburg. While game number four will go Friday, February the 16th. That's an 8.30 start in Shelburne. Game number five, if necessary, goes Saturday, February 17th. That's a 7.30 start in Tilsonburg. Game number six will go Saturday, uh, Sunday, February the 18th. That's a 5 p.m. puck drop in Shelburne. And game seven will, will wrap Tuesday, February 20th. That time is still to be determined. It will go in Tilsonburg if necessary. And your final playoff matchup worth looking into is the number three Durham Thundercats and the number six Soggin Shores Winterhawks renewing hostilities. As, of, as far as we know in this series, game number one will go Friday, February the 2nd at 8.30. That's in Durham to start. Game number two will then go Saturday, February the 3rd, 7 o'clock p.m. at the Plex in Port Elgin. Game number three will go Friday, February the 9th at 8.30 in Durham. Game number four goes Saturday, February the 10th. That's an 8 p.m. start in Port Elgin. Game number five still has a date to be determined and a time to be determined. That'll go in Durham for game number five. Game six goes Saturday, February the 17th. That's an 8 p.m. start in Port Elgin. And game seven, again, time and date still to be determined. That will go in Durham. So yes, like I say, game number one will emanate from Durham. And that's an 8.30 start. Friday, February the 2nd, 2018, between your Soggy Shores Winterhawks and Durham Thundercats in a matchup of three versus six. And then game two will go this weekend, Saturday, February the 3rd. It will go at seven o'clock, the puck drop there, between at the Plex in Port Elgin, between the Thundercats and the Winterhawks. Yeah, so the WOA playoffs are shaken up to be a doozy. It should be awesome. It should be full of fireworks, especially in the Durham Thundercats, Sogging Shores, Winterhawks series. I expect everybody out for that one. Uh, we want to take a look real quick at your Sogging Shores, Winterhawks leading scorers. Miles McLean finished the season at tops among all Winterhawks scorers. He finished with 11 goals and 16 assists, led the team in both categories, finishing with 27 points. Chris Menard finished at number 2, 10 goals, 12 assists for 22 points. Brett McDermott also had 22 points on 8 goals and 14 assists. Josh Hopkin finished number 4, 8 goals, 13 assists, 21 points. Brian Kazarian had 8 goals and 10 assists for 18 points. Andy Mitchell, 9 goals, 8 assists for 17 points. Lachlan Elder uh, had 6 goals and 11 assists, good for 17 points. Andy Fraz with 5 goals and 12 assists for 17 points. Trent Hawk was 7 and 9 for 16. And Connor Patton rounds out the top 10. Four goals, nine assists, good for 13 points for Connor on the season. Uh, everybody was impressive all around. They had a lot of balanced scoring this year, and uh, they hope to emanate that come playoff time in a very difficult matchup against the number three ranked Durham Thundercats. That has been all for this week's edition of Hawk Talk. We'll be right back after this. Stick around.
TST Total Sports Talk presents the Own Sound Attack Report. Welcome back to the program, everybody. Andrew Rogers here for TST Total Sports Talk. Thank you very, very much for joining me as always. And, uh, Thank you for supporting TST and continue to watch week after week. This is your own sound attack report. Uh, let's get you caught up on the week that was for your own sound attack. It was attack in the London Knights from the Bud Gardens in London. And the London Knights coming out on top in this one. 7-4 was the final over the own sound attack. Olivier Lafreniere got the loss. Uh, he was... Uh, he was came on in relief of Matt Guzda after he was pulled at 15-22 mark of the second period. He stopped 7-9 along the way, but unfortunately would endure the loss as the own sound attack fall to 19-19, 2-5 on the season, while the London Knights improved to 26-17, 2-2 on the year. Scoring for your own sound attack in the loss was Nick Suzuki with his 24th. He also had an assist. Aiden Dudas put up his 21st. Jackson Doherty with his 4th. And Brett McKenzie with his 12th. Maxime Sushko would add an assist in the uh, loss, capping the scoring for the own sound attack. Well, on the London Knights side, it was Joseph Raymakers getting the victory for the London Knights, stopping 38 of 42 in the victory. Alex Formentin would provide the bulk of the offense. He had three goals and an assist, uh, giving him 15 on the year for the Knights. Liam Foody was, uh, is, uh, had two on the night, giving him 10 on the year. And Tyler Rolo with a goal and three assists had a four point night. It gave him nine goals on the season. Also scoring was Connor McMichael uh, with his seventh. Uh, and defenseman Evan Bouchard, captain of the London Knights, had four assists in the victory for London to pace them in this one. So like I said, 7-4 to four was the final there. Attack would then be at the Bayshore and Own Sound to take on the visiting Guelph Storm. Attack being uh, coming out victorious in this one. 2-1 to one was the final. Olivier Lafreniere uh, got the start in this one after being pulled against the London Knights. Stopped 24 of 25 in the victory. While goaltender Nico Dawes was very busy in the Guelph net. Stopping 45 of 47 in the loss for the Guelph Storm. One side attack improving to 20-19, 2-5. While the Guelph Storm fall to 23-19, 1-3 on the year. Posting the only goal for the Guelph Storm in this one was Cam Hillis with his 18th goal of the season. It was assisted by Ryan Merkley and Garrett McFadden. Scoring for your own sound attack was Cade Robinson um, and Ethan Zapula scoring for the uh, for the own sound attack. Adding assists were Alan Lotharjic, Trenton Bork, and Aiden Dudas Lotharjic with the pair in this one as the own sound attacker victorious. Two to one was the final. Taking a look now at your uh, your your uh, standings in the uh, Ontario Hockey League. We start in the Eastern Conference. The Hamilton Bulldogs continue to lead. They are 31-11-3-3. They have a sizable advantage over the number two Niagara Ice Dogs. They have 68 points in the season. Niagara finish, uh, are at 26-14-4-3. They are good for 59 points. The Barry Colts come in at number three. 27-17-2-1 on the year. Good for 57 points. They are tied with the Kingston Frontenacs. 25-16-4-3 for them on the year. Good for 57 points. The North Bay Battalion come in at number five. They are 22-25-1 on the year, good for 50 points. They are a point ahead of the Oshawa Generals in the number six spot. 23-22-3-0 on the year. The Ottawa 67s are three points behind in the number seven spot. They are 19-21-5-3, good for 46 points. The Mississauga Steelheads at number eight. They are 22-24-0-1, good for 45 points. The Peterborough Peets three points out of a playoff spot as we stand. 18-24-3-3 on the year, good for 42 points. And the Sudbury Wolves in the number 10 spot. They are in the basement. 13-30, 0 good for 32 points on the season. Flipping over now your Western Conference standings, we have our first playoff, can, uh, a confirmed playoff spot clinched. The Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, who can't lose a game, uh, they have clinched a playoff spot officially, and we are still in January, folks. They are 45-2-1 on the season, good for 83 points. They cannot miss the playoffs as it stands. The Kitchener Rangers at number two, and they will probably stay there. Uh, they are 33-14-2 in Ogre for 68 points. They have a sizable advantage over the four-place London Knights. The Sarnia Sting at number three will be 34-12-3-0 on the year. They have 71 points. The London Knights aforementioned 26-18-2-2 two two on the year, good for 56 points. The Guelph Storm occupied number five. They are 24-19-1-3 on the year, good for 52 points. 
The Saginaw Spirit come in at number six. They have twenty. They are twenty four nineteen four and zero, oh, good for fifty two points. The Windsor Spitfires have fallen to number seven. They are twenty three twenty two and oh, two and two on the year, good for fifty points. Three points better than the Owen Sound Attack in number eight. Twenty nineteen two and five on the year, good for forty seven points. You have the Erie Otters at number nine, thirteen twenty six six and three, good for thirty five. And the Flint Firebirds, thirty two points, fourteen twenty nine three and one on the season. Switching over to your own sound attack leading scorers at this point in the season, Nick Suzuki continues to lead the way by a sizable margin. 24 and 38 on the season for him, he has 62 points. Sean Dersey continues to uh, anchor the de the defense. He has 15 goals, 32 assists, good for 47 points, good for second on the team. Aiden Dudas uh, is number three, 21 and 25 for 46. Kevin Hancock with 38. Maxime Shushko with 36. Brett McKenzie with 29. Ethan Zapula with 28, Jonah Gajevich with 26, uh, Alan Lethargic with 22, Ethan Zapula with 28, Marcus Phillips with 22. Uh, not necessarily in that order, but I'm assuming you already knew that. League leaders around the OHL, Jordan Kairou leads the way. He has a one-point advantage over Morgan Frost. Kairou with 26 and 54, good for 80, while Morgan Frost of the Greyhounds, 28 and 51 for 79. Aaron Luchuk of the Barry Colts, 37 and 35, good for 72. While Sam Militech of the Niagara Ice Dogs, previously of the London Knights, 24 and 45, good for 69. Kitchener's Adam Maskerin has comes in at 5, 33 and 34, good for 67. Jason Robertson of the Kings of Frontenacs, 31 and 34 for 65. Uh, Own Sound's Nick Suzuki comes in at number 7. Uh, he has 24 and 38, good for 62. London's Evan Bouchard leads all defensemen in scoring, 16 and 44, good for 60 points. Linus Nyman of the Kingston Frontenacs, 24 and 35, good for 59. And Boris Kachuk, 33 and 26 for 59, rounds out the OHL's top 10. Now here is where the Own Sound Attack will be this upcoming week on their schedule uh, for your Own Sound Attack and who they will face. First up, it will be uh, first for your Own Sound Attack, it will be a visit to the Harry Lumley Bayshore from the Barry Colts, Wednesday, January 31st. That is a 7 p.m p.m. puck drop between the Barry Colts and the Owen Sound attack. Nick Suzuki looks to lead the way for the attack in this one to another victory. Then next up for your Owen Sound attack after that, they are at in, in the Guelph to face off against the Guelph Storm at the Sleeman Center in Guelph. That's a 7.30 p.m. puck drop on Friday, February the 2nd of 2018. A matchup that we've seen many times this year and it's always been a decent matchup. Attack looking to uh, come out on victorious in this one. Sean Dersey looking to lead the team into victory against the Guelph Storm. That goes Friday, February the 2nd, 2018. And finally, the Own Sound Attack wrap their week Saturday, February the 3rd. It's the Kitchener Rangers in town to face off against your Own Sound Attack at the Harry Lumley Bay Shore in Own Sound. That is a 7.30 puck drop for your Own Sound Attack. This has been all for your Own Sound Attack report for this week's episode of TST. We'll be right back after this. Stick around. TST Total Sports Talk presents the NHL and the Toronto Maple Leafs Report. Welcome back to the program, everybody. Andrew Rogers here for TST Total Sports Talk. Thank you very much for joining me as always. I appreciate the viewership and I appreciate the support of the, uh, the uh, overall effort of TST Total Sports Talk. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate bringing these episodes to you guys week after week. We've now reached the point in the program where we want to talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs and the National Hockey League story. The Maple Leafs were just on a mandated buy, and uh, and you know what? They returned last week. They played four games. They were very busy. This week they had two games on the schedule uh, heading into the NHL's All-Star break, and uh, you know what? They, they needed a couple victories to go in strong and keep the momentum as they head in to the final stretch of, of games uh, coming up this season. And uh, they look to build uh, towards the trade deadline and ultimately a playoff spot in securing that, which should be rather doable in the NHL's uh, aforementioned Bad Atlantic, as uh, they like to call it, considering all the teams in the bottom half of the Atlantic are uh, not, uh, not up, to, up to par in uh, comparison to the very uh, very tough Metro division. Uh, anyways, what we want to talk about now is the week that was for your Toronto Maple Leafs. 
First up, it was the Maple Leafs traveling to Chicago to take on the Chicago Blackhawks. And they would come out victorious. 3-2 was the final in this one. Uh, Maple Leafs improving to 27-18-5 and five on the year. While the Blackhawks fall to 22-19-7 uh, and seven on the year. Frederick Anderson was victorious in this one, 34-36. and 36, While Jeff Glass of the Blackhawks stopped 33-36 and 36 in the loss. Uh, scoring for the Maple Leafs in this one were Mitch Marner with his 7th, Nazem Kadri with his 15th, and William Nylander on a beautiful goal in the, in, on a penalty shot in overtime. It was his 10th of the season. James Van Riemsdyk and Jake Gardner added assists as well. Scoring for the Chicago Blackhawks was Nick Schmaltz with his 13th. He also added an assist. Scoring also for, was, for Chicago was Brent Seabrook with his 3rd. Patrick Kane, Artem Nisimov, and Vinny... Hino Stroza, <laughs> excuse me, uh, had an assist in the game for the Chicago Blackhawks. A huge win for your Toronto Maple Leafs coming out of, uh, heading into the All-Star weekend. 3-2 was the final in this one. And then finally, Maple Leafs uh, into Dallas to face off against the Dallas Stars. It was the Maple Leafs uh, on top in this one. 4-1 to one was the final. Maple Leafs improving to 28-18-5, while the Dallas Stars fall to 28-18-4. For the Dallas Stars, it was Ben Bishop getting the start. He would get the loss in this one. He stopped 25 of 29 in the defeat. While goaltender Curtis McElhaney on a back-to-back -back was very, very strong in the game for the Maple Leafs. Guiding them to victory, he stopped 39 of 40 in the win. Nazem Kadri would score two on the night. That would give him, this gives him 17 on the season. While Austin Matthews scored his 22nd. And Zach Hyman, father to be. Uh, added his ninth of the year. Jake Gardner added three assists while William Nylander chipped in with two. Scoring for the Dallas Stars, applying, uh, supplying the lone goal was Tyler Sagan with his 23rd. It was assisted by Alexander Radulov. Looking now at your Atlantic Division standings, we have the Tampa Bay Lightning continue to lead. They have 71 points with 34 wins, 12 losses, and three assists. The Boston Bruins are at number two, 29, 10, and 8, good for 66. While the Maple Leafs come in at number 3, 28, 18, and 5, good for 61. No real threat from the number 4 seeded Detroit Red Wings, who sit at 46 points on the season. They are tied with the Montreal Canadiens at 46. You have the Florida Panthers, 2 behind at 44. The Ottawa Senators come in at number 7. They have 39 points to their name. And the Buffalo Sabres, who are 14, 26, and 9, they have 37 points on the season. Looking now at the Metropol looking now at the Metropolitan Division, we got the Washington Capitals in the number one spot. They are 29, 15, and 5, good for 63 points. The Columbus Blue Jackets are at number two, but it's a log jam from there. 27, 19, and 3 for them. They have 57 points. Pittsburgh's also at 57 points. 27, 21, and 3. The New Jersey Devils and Philadelphia Flyers occupy the two wild card spots in the Metro, or in the East, excuse me. 56 points apiece for them. But one behind are the New York Rangers and the New York Islanders, both at 55. And then you have the Carolina Hurricanes at 52. Looking now at your Central Division standings in the Western Conference, we have the Winnipeg Jets. They are at 66 points, one point better than the Nashville Predators, who are at 65. You have the St. Louis Blues at 30, 18, and 3. They are six, two points behind at 63 points. The Dallas Stars at 20, 28, 18, and 4. Good for 60. The Colorado Avalanche at 27, 18, and 3. Good for 57 points. Well, the Minnesota Wild, they're at 57 points as well. 26, 18, and 5. And the Chicago Blackhawks, 4 points behind. 23, 19, and 7 on the season. Your two wild card spots in the Western Conference are the Dallas Stars and the Colorado Avalanche. And finally, we wrap with the Pacific Division standings and the biggest surprise of the NHL all season long, it's fair to say, are the Las Vegas Golden Knights. They are 32, 12, and 4, good for 68 points. Number 2 is the San Jose Sharks. They are 26, 15, and 7, good for 59. And the Calgary Flames at 25, 16, and 8, good for 58 points. The Los Angeles Kings and the Anaheim Ducks at 57 points apiece are, are climbing as uh, LA, Anaheim, Colorado, and Minnesota are all in that second wild card conversation in the Western Conference. And then finally in the Pacific, you have the Edmonton Oilers at 47 points, Vancouver at 44, and the pathetic Arizona Coyotes at 33 points, wrapping up the Pacific Division. Looking now at your Toronto Maple Leafs leading scorers at, the, at this point in the season, the Austin Matthews continues to lead the way. He has a one-point advantage over William Nylander. Matthews at 37, Nylander at 36. Mitch Marner is 7-27 on this season, good for 34 points. While Morgan Riley comes in at number 4, 5-26, good for 31. You have 
James Van Riemsdyk at number 5, 19 goals, 11 assists for him, good for 30. Jake Gardner at number 6, 3 and 26, good for 29. Nazem Kadri at 28. Zach Hyman at 26. Tyler Bozak at 26. And Patrick Marlowe at 25. And now at your NHL league leading scorers at this point in the season, Nikita Kucherov continues to lead the way from Tampa, 27 and 37, good for 64. Nathan McKinnon of Colorado is number 2. He has 24 goals, 36 assists, good for 60 points. Phil Kessel, 21 and 37, good for 58. While Steven Stamkos has 18 and 40, good for 58. Claude Giroux of the Philadelphia Flyers, 14 and 43, good for 57. John Tavares of the Islanders, 26 and 31. Johnny Goudreau of the Calgary Flames, 15 and 41. Jakub Voracek, 9 and 47. He leads all NHLers in assists with 47, point, uh, 47 assists. Sidney Crosby is number 9, 17 and 38 for 55. And Josh Bailey, former own sound attack. Now for the New York Islanders, 12 and 42, good for 54. Uh, taking a look ahead now at your Maple Leafs schedule for the week that upcoming. Uh, we have the New York Islanders into Toronto to face off against the Maple Leafs. That's Wednesday, January the 31st at the Air Canada Centre in Toronto. Um, that'll uh, be a, a dandy of a, star, of a game. Uh, then you have the Maple Leafs the following night. They are in New York to face off against the New York Rangers at M MSG in New York. That's a 7 p.m. puck drop. Thursday, February the 1st, Jay Garner looks to lead the Maple Leafs to victory on the back-to-back. Uh, -back. It'll be a very, very tough contest. Uh, the Islanders and Rangers, very tough teams, and uh, the Maple Leafs will need to bring their A game for those matchups. And then uh, finally, the Maple Leafs will wrap their week uh, upcoming with a visit to Boston to face off against the second seed in the Atlantic Division. It'll be the Boston Bruins at the TD Garden in Boston, Saturday, February the 3rd on Hockey Night in Canada. It's a 7 p.m. puck drop from Boston between the Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins. It's always a dandy when these two teams meet. Uh, that has been all for your uh, Toronto Maple Leafs report on this week's edition of TST. We'll be right back after this. Stick around, folks. TST Total Sports Talk presents the Toronto Raptors and the NBA Report. Welcome back to the program, everybody. Andrew Rogers here, TST. You should know that by now. I've only said it about a dozen times. Uh, we've reached the, to the point in the program now where we want to talk about the Toronto Raptors and What's not to like about this Raptors team? They are making a serious push to finish in the number one seed in the uh, Eastern Conference. Uh, they have the exact same amount of losses, which I'll explain in a little bit in the Eastern Conference in comparison to the Boston Celtics. However, they've played three more games. We'll get to that. Uh, but it was a uh, we want to first update you on the week that was for your Toronto Raptors. First off, for the Toronto Raptors, it was a visit to Atlanta to face off against the Atlanta Hawks. Raptors coming out of victorious in this one, 108 to 93 was the final. Raptors improving to 32 and 14 on the season, while Atlanta falls to 14 and 33. Fred Van Vliet would lead the Raptors 19 points, seven rebounds in the victory, while Jonas Valanciunas had a double double, 16 points, 13 rebounds for him. Demar Derozan poured in 14, while Serge Ibaka added 12, and OG Anunoby had 10 points and five rebounds for the Raptors in the victory. Dennis Schroeder of the Atlanta Hawks would have a game-high 20 points. He would lead the Hawks. Eight rebounds also. John Collins with the double-double. 13 points, 16 rebounds. Kent Bazemore adding 13, while Luke Babbitt added 9. And Marco Bellinelli with 8. Final score again in this one, 108-93 for your Toronto Raptors. Raptors then returning to the Air Canada Centre where they welcome in the Utah Jazz, and it was the Jazz victorious in this one. 97-93 was the final. Raptors fall into 32 and 15 on the year, while the Utah Jazz fall, uh, improved to 21 and 28. Jonas Valanciunas led all Raptors scores with 28 points and 14 rebounds for another double double. Uh, Demar Derozan poured in 19. He also had six rebounds and eight assists. Serge Ibaka with a double double as well, 10 points, 10 boards. C.J. Miles with 10 points, and Kyle Lowry with a disappointing five and seven assists in the loss. Donovan Mitchell added all. Uh, he paced all the. Jazz scores in this one. He had 20. He had 26 in the victory. While Rudy Gobert added 18 and 15 rebounds in a double double. Ricky Rubio was very solid. 14 points, six rebounds, six assists. Joe Ingles with 11 points and Derek Favors 
finished with 10 points and 9 boards in the victory for the Jazz, a 4-point victory over the Toronto Raptors in this one. Finally, wrapping the week was the Raptors again at the ACC visit, uh, with welcoming in the Los Angeles Lakers. 123 to 111 was the final for the Raptors, who improved to 33 and 15 on the season, while the Lakers fall to 19 and 30. Fred Van Vliet would once again lead the Raptors in scoring, 25 points for him on the night. DeMar DeRozan would add, in, add 19 points and 7 assists in the victory, while Kyle Lowry had a double double, 14 points, 11 boards. And Jonas Valanciunas with a double-double, 13 points and 10 rebounds. C.J. Miles would add 13 points in the victory for the Raptors as well. 123-111 uh, being the final score in this one. Julius Randle added uh, pace to the Lakers in this one. He had 17 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, also adding 17 was Jordan Clarkson. We had Contavious Caldwell-Pope adding 16 for the Lakers. And then you had Larry Nance Jr. with 15 and 8. And Brandon Ingram with 14 and 6. But it was not to be. On this night, Raptors 123-111 victorious in this one. Looking now at your Eastern Conference standings. We start there. The Boston Celtics continue to lead the way. They are 36-15, one and a half better than the Toronto Raptors in number two at 33-15, one and a half back. The Cleveland Cavaliers are four games behind. They are 29-19 on the year, good for third place. Miami Heat are at 29-21. They are six and a half back, one back of the Cavaliers in the four spot. Milwaukee Bucks at number 5, 27 and 22, 8 behind the Celtics. You have the Washington Wizards at 27 and 22 as well. They are 8 points back. And the Indiana Pacers at 29 and 23 are 8 points, 8 games back. The Philadelphia 76ers are 24 and 23. They are 10 back. The Detroit Pistons at number 9 are 22 and 26. They are 12 and a half back. You have the New York Knicks at 22 and 28. They are 13 and a half back. Charlotte at number 11, 15 back. Chicago Bulls 17 and a half with the Brooklyn Nets at 17 and a half and 12 and 13. The Atlanta Hawks at 14, 15 and 35, and the Orlando Magic at 14 and 34, 20 and a half. Those te those teams really no threat to the Boston Celtics or any other team for that matter in the Eastern Conference. And then flipping over to your Western Conference standings, you have the Golden State Warriors at 40 and 10. They continue to lead the way by four games over the Houston Rockets, who are in the number two. Sp Two spot, 35 and 13 on the year. The San Antonio Spurs at 33 and 19 are eight games behind. You have the Minnesota Timberwolves at 32 and 21, nine and a half back. The Oklahoma City Thunder at 30 and 20 are 10 back. New Orleans Pelicans 27 and 22. Portland Trailblazers at 27 and 22. You have the Denver Nuggets at 26 and 24. The LA Clippers 25 and 24. Utah Jazz 21 and 28. The LA Lakers at 19 and 30. Memphis Grizzlies 18 and 31. Phoenix Suns at 17 and 34, the Dallas Mavericks at 16 and 35, and the Sacramento Kings at 15 and 34. So the Toronto Raptors looking to build on the success that they had this past week with and translate it into a few more victories. Uh, they uh, they will open the week uh, the upcoming with a matchup at the ACC against the visiting Minnesota Timberwolves. Andrew Wiggins is in town to take off take on JV and the Raptors. That goes Tuesday, January the 30th, 7:30 is the tip off in. That one, they follow that up by taking a trip over to Washington, D.C., to the Capital One Arena, where they will uh, go up against the Washington Wizards Thursday, February the 1st. DeMar DeRozan looking to lead them to victory. That is a 7 p.m. tip-off uh, between the Raptors and the Washington Wizards. And then Friday, February the 2nd, it'll be the Portland Trailblazers at the Air Canada Centre to face off against the Toronto Raptors. That is a 7.30 start. Uh, Kyle Lowry looking to uh, lead the Raptors to victory again against the Portland Trailblazers. It'll be their third game of the week. It'll be It's a very busy week for your Toronto Raptors, uh, but they will be looking big to Kyle Lowry to lean on him against the very tough Portland Trailblazers. And then finally, they wrap their week upcoming with a matchup against the Memphis Grizzlies who are in the air, into the Air Canada Centre Sunday, February the 4th, 2018. That is a 12 p.m. tip-off, a matinee affair at the Air Canada Centre in Toronto between the Memphis Grizzlies and the Toronto Raptors. Like I say, the Raptors, they've been unbelievable this year, and it's very, it's very encouraging to see. They have a nice little buffer against the, uh, in terms of uh, who is higher seeded between them and the Cleveland Cavaliers. It's a four-game uh, differential right now. That would be very huge come playoff time if the Raptors and the Cavs should meet at some point in the playoffs. Uh, they would obviously have the home court advantage should that happen, and I think that could be huge in that matchup. 
Uh, that's been all for your Toronto Raptors report on this week's episode of TST. We'll be right back after this. TST Total Sports Talk presents the NFL Report. Welcome back to the program, everybody. Andrew Rogers here for TST Total Sports Talk. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, it's a pleasure to be here, and I hope you're enjoying the episode thus far. Uh, we've reached a point in the program where we want to talk about the NFL, and uh, why not? With the Super Bowl, with Super Bowl Fifty Two only a few days away, uh, it's going to be an incredible spectacle. And uh, personally, I can't wait for it. Uh, I think it'll be a tremendous matchup between two uh, unbelievable teams. You obviously have the top seed from each, uh, the NFC and the AFC, uh, going head to head. Um, what a story, though, it would be if the Philadelphia Eagles were to up in the New England Patriots, especially for quarterback Nick Foles, uh, a guy that most people would not have pegged to start uh, in the Super Bowl for the Eagles, uh, as m m many believe that it would be Carson Wentz's show come the time when they would reach the Super Bowl. However, that is not to be the case. And uh, yeah, what a story it would be, a heroic effort uh, for Nick Foles to lead the Eagles to victory, uh, however highly unlikely as it looks to be another Patriots Super Bowl. That seems to be the overall consensus. They are four and a half point favorites at this point uh, to uh, win the Super Bowl again. Uh, it would be Tom Brady's sixth Super Bowl. He is five and two in the Super Bowl with the only two losses coming to Eli Manning and the New York Football Giants. Uh, yeah, Tom Brady in the past, man. You can't say enough about this team. They are a dynasty, no doubt, and uh, they are very tough come Super Bowl time. It's just uh, unbelievable. Let's uh, take a look at the road that is for each team. Uh, we had the New England Patriots knocking off the Tennessee Titans 35-14 in the uh, divisional round, setting up a matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars in the AFC Championship, which they would win 24-20. Uh, big comeback in that one in the second half, as we all know, erasing a 14-point deficit. Uh, and then you have, on the other side, you have the Philadelphia Eagles, who upended the Atlanta Falcons 15-10 to uh, to reach the a, uh, NFC Championship uh, part of the bracket, where they would absolutely demolish the Minnesota Vikings 38-7 to reach Super Bowl 52. It goes down Sunday, February the 4th, uh, at 6.30 is the kickoff in Minnesota uh, between the Patriots and the Eagles. Uh, personally, for me, here's... You know what, I, as much as I, I want to see an Eagles win, it seems very unlikely, but I am going to predict it. I, I will say Eagles will win the Super Bowl. Uh, Nick Foles will be the MVP. He will turn in an MVP Tom Brady-esque performance. Uh, you know what, that's my prediction. However, I've been known to be wrong from time to time or late or whatever have you. But I honestly think uh, that's, my, that's my prediction here is that the uh, Philadelphia Eagles will reign supreme and win Super Bowl 52 handedly, actually, over the New England Patriots. How about that? Handedly. Um, you know what? It, it would, it's going to be a remarkable Super Bowl. Uh, you know what? It should be filled with spectacles and events and, and all that sort of thing. Prop bets is probably one of my favorite things about the Super Bowl, uh, aside from the commercials, of course. Uh, some of the crazy prop bets of whether or not Janet Jackson will show up for during the halftime show. Of course, Justin Timberlake is the headliner there. Um, and how many times they'll mention uh, either the wardrobe malfunction or maybe some variation of Nipplegate. I, I really don't know, but oh boy, oh boy, would it not be fun if uh, Janet showed up. That would be just absolutely jaw-dropping, I think. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we'll see what happens. Uh, a lot of people just watch for the halftime show, which is kind of strange considering it takes away from the luster of the game. But uh, you know what? This game could get out of hand if the Pats are up huge uh, by the time the halftime show ro rolls around. So that could uh, draw the ire of any anybody watching. But, you know, stomachs will be full, wings will be served, chili will be on, and uh, it should be a lot of fun, and beers will be drinking. Uh, you can guarantee that. And, and a lot of people will be uh, calling in Monday for sure uh, if they got to go in Monday morning early. And uh, let's say one of their teams, the Pats or the Eagles, come out victorious. Uh, I think that's a foregone conclusion. Want to switch over now uh, and, and, of course, remind you of our playoff bracket challenge here at TST. Uh, you have, uh, <clears throat> we want to update you on the current standings. Uh, like I say, we have Blake at 140. We have John at 110. 
Jody at 90, Sean at 90, and Brandon at 90. Um, right now, <clears throat> Blake is the, the early projection to win. Uh, should the Patriots win, here are how the scenarios would break down. You would have Blake finishing at number one, and you would have Jody and Sean finishing in a tie for two, in which case then it would come down to the tiebreaker scenarios. Um, the, Jody and Sean can only fish, finish second in this scenario should the New England Patriots come out victorious. And then should the Eagles come out victorious, it would fall in like this. John would finish in the number one spot. He would finish with 160 points. And then Brandon and Blake would be tied for the number two spot, and that would come down to the tiebreaker scenarios, which of course are the total combined score of the Super Bowl, and then the respective score of each team, the AFC being the New England Patriots and the NFC team in the Philadelphia Eagles. It should be a lot of fun, and uh, we'll crown a winner on next week's episode of TST Total Sports Talk. That has been all for your NFL report. Enjoy the Super Bowl, everybody. It should be a lot of fun. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the program, everybody. Andrew Rogers here, TST Total Sports Talk. Thank you very much for uh, continuing to watch and continuing to support uh, TST and Total Sports Talk, my show, and all the efforts that go into it. I really, go, I really want you guys to to know how much I appreciate any viewership, any feedback. Negative, positive, doesn't really matter. I do really enjoy putting these episodes together, no matter how tedious or no matter how busy uh, it, it makes me in the process. But it is a lot of fun, and I do really enjoy bringing these episodes to you guys week after week after week. Uh, there are a number of ways to find me on social media. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. I have a page, TSD Total Sports Talk. I'm also on YouTube, obviously, where all these videos are uh, available for your viewing pleasure. I am on Twitter. I am on Instagram. And uh, I really do uh, enjoy this whole coverage um, you know, aspect of my life. And it's it's just, I've, I've had a real blast with it. Um, you know, a lot of... Uh, a lot of effort and a lot of time goes into the graphics that you see on each episode. And I, I really do do that with the best intention of making this very visually appealing. And uh, I really want you guys to know that, uh, that I really do this for, for you guys, for the people. And uh, I, I get a lot of uh, enjoyment out of that. And uh, you know what, I, I just want, want to make sure that at the end of the day that you guys are enjoying what you see. And uh I welcome back any feedback. Again, positive, negative, doesn't matter. I just want to know what you guys think of the program and if I can do anything to improve it. Uh, I will, certainly. Um, but yeah, this uh, this wraps up uh, this week's episode of TST Total Sports Talk, Season 2, Episode 18. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next week. Andrew Rogers for TST Total Sports Talk. Peace!